So the Robazonia Community Blood Drive will happen at St. Paul's on June 20th from 8 to 1. That's a little shorter time span. Uh, everyone must have an appointment. There will be no walk-ins. All donors will be asked screening questions, have their temperatures taken prior to entering the donor room. Donor chairs will be spaced appropriately and uh, you will ask to be wear uh, masks at all times. Uh, appointments are available on Miller, Ste Miller Keystone's website or you can reach out to Karen Moyer uh, by texting or calling her um, and so please do that. Prayer concerns, we keep in our prayers Paul and Gail McKim, Burrow Ruth, Kathleen Hall, Joyce Sutliff, the Harold Steve family, Steve Sablone, Nancy Kerr, John Hopman, Don Fry, Norman Forey, Neil McElwee, um, we especially pray for John Hopman and Ruth Ann Moyer on the death of their sister, and I believe that graveside service is today, and Judy Trump and her family on the death of her father. Uh, also, a reach out to Dawn Fry on the death of her uncle. Uh, so please keep all those folks in your prayers. If you need groceries or food, if you need uh, financial help or need to talk to someone, please give us a call. Will you join me in prayer? God, we trust that you are good and do good. Teach us to be your faithful people in this time of global crisis. Help us to follow in the footsteps of our faithful shepherd, Jesus, who laid down his life for the sake of love. Glorify his name as you equip us with everything needed for doing your will. Amen. The reading this day comes from Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out not knowing where he was going by faith, by faith he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered, considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac. He who had received the promises was ready to offer up his only son, of whom he had been told, it is through Isaac, that descendants shall be named for you. He considered the fact that God is able even to raise someone from the dead, and figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. There are people born in Hawaii who spend their entire lives on one island and are gently laid to rest beneath their native dirt without ever having seen even one other island let alone the mainland of the United States or any other part of the world. So comfortable and incurious are they that they seldom wish to know about the world beyond the horizon, let alone go visiting. The writer of this New Testament letter to the Hebrews seemingly scolds people of such limited vision and faith. He lifts up the name of Abraham and other pioneers who ventured beyond physical and metaphysical horizons in response to God's call. Abraham trusted God's call to leave the comfort and familiarity of his home in Ur, thought to be somewhere in Mesopotamia. 
and to travel to the unknown land of Palestine to become the father of the Hebrew nation. In the New Testament, Abram was the ancestor not only of those who described themselves as the seed of Abraham, but also of the body of believers in Jesus Christ as well. Abraham's entire life under God was an outstanding illustration of faith and action, even when it led him into the unknown, beyond the horizon. I guess maybe that's how I'm feeling right now, facing the unknown, a new horizon, as the shelter-in-place order is lifted, but a pandemic continues with no vaccine or cure in our hands. As we move forward into a new awareness of racism and prejudice without a roadmap to make clear of where we go from here. And yet our, our horizons have always been limited, right? Some parents may give their children lots of money, a car when they turn 16, and unlimited freedom and think all of their children's needs are met. But then they wonder why their kids get in trouble with the law sometimes. Our limited view provides the basis for the parochial way we look at things. For example, the North American Baseball Championship for men is called the World Series. We may be informed by our television whether the weather announcer that the all-time record for rain or heat was set on a certain date. All time usually means the past 100 years at best. Our horizon is short behind us as well, right? Our medical, educational, and scientific, scientific journals rare, rarely refer to any fact or finding published before 1940. And anything discovered or understood before the First World War is considered ancient history anymore. Our horizons before and after tend to be measured on a short yardstick or our own habits of mind. When Robert Louis Stevenson was coughing out his life with a lung disease, his wife Fanny walked into the bedroom and said, Well, I suppose you'll tell me that it's a glorious day. Yes, the noted author replied, looking at the sunlight streaming through his bedroom window, I refuse to let a row of medicine bottles be my horizon. I don't know what tomorrow brings. I don't know where we're headed with the pandemic or with the racism prejudice issue. But we need to move forward as best we can together into the unknown walking by faith, living in love. Let me close with a poem I found. I think it's really a prayer, and that's how I'm going to take it. It was written by Stephen Vincent Bennett. It goes like this. Will you join me? God, pity us indeed, for we are human and do not always see. The vision when it comes, the shining change, or if we see it, do not follow it, because it is too hard, too strange, too new, too unbelievable, too difficult, warring too much with the common, easy ways. Life is not lost by dying. Life is lost minute by minute, day by dragging day, in all the thousand small, undaring ways. Always and always, life can be lost without vision, but not lost by death. Lost by not daring, willing, going on beyond the ragged edge of our fortitude to something more, something no person has seen. Amen. Will you join me in the prayer that Jesus taught us? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be safe. Let's look for a new horizon, and let's journey there together. Amen.